How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Today I want to show you the installation of a disconnect switch here at your furnace. Now this is called out in code and we should not have something like MC or metal clad cabling coming directly into our furnace providing power. There should be a disconnect switch or a light switch here on your furnace or within your seeing distance where you can easily turn off power to the unit so it can be serviced without having to go to your breaker panel. I'll be giving you two different options. One is just a simple single pole light switch that will install right off the side of the unit. And another would be a single pole switch, but with an outlet as well, which can come in handy. And then at the end, I will show you the same unit, which can be used a little bit differently and really get you out of a pinch when it comes to the power being out and you want to still power your gas furnace. So we'll even touch on that scenario, which can be a great addition to your furnace and really prepare you for any emergencies in the future. So let's start opening things up and then we'll start off with that single pole light switch. So before you start work, make sure that you have your circuit breaker off and now I'm gonna open up the service panel so we can have access to the wiring inside and start to get a handy box in place for our light switch. While you're out at the breaker, check and see if it's a 15 or 20 amp breaker. That's gonna tell you what light switch you should be getting, whether it's gonna be a 15 amp or 20 amp. Additionally, you can find a name plate such as this, and if we zoom in here, you'll be able to find out the call out here for what kind of electrical supply you would need. So we're running a 115 or a 120 circuit here. Maximum amperage is gonna be 12, and then that's gonna be fed by a 15 amp circuit. So I'll be using 15 amp components installing this light switch and that light switch outlet combo. So first up, I wanna get access to the current junction box, which is actually internal here. Just taking off one sheet metal screw, I'll take off the cover and confirm with a non-context voltage tester that we do not have power coming to this furnace. Then we have our neutral, our hot, and this ground screw here, which is providing the equipment ground and grounding the casing or the metal surround of this furnace or air handler. Undoing the hot, black, and neutral white, you'll see the stranded wires kind of beat up and I'll show you how to correct that later on. Then internally, you'll see a lock nut. I'll use my hybrid wire strippers and just loosen that up. You really only have to loosen this up half or three quarters of a turn and then it's finger tight where you can just take that lock nut off and pull your MC cable off. Now you have some options. I'm just gonna use a simple handy box and mount that right to the side of the furnace so we have our switch easily accessible anytime we need to service the furnace. To do that, I'm simply just gonna knock out this half inch knockout right in the middle of the handy box and then use what's called a chase nipple. That will go through the middle, retaining this side, and then on the back side, we'll just use the common lock nut to then hold that onto the sheet metal here and then secure the handy box and then start to wire up that single pull switch. So you can use your hybrid wire strippers or a flathead and just punch that middle half inch knockout out of the handy box. Then use your half inch chase pushing that from the inside through and then the lock nut on the back side. So you'll hand tighten that and then I'm just gonna use my hybrids again to tighten it up until I have a nice secure connection with the handy box. Then we'll punch out that top half inch knockout and we're gonna pass our metal clad cabling in. And you can see that nipple actually provides a nice bushing where you do not have any sharp edges passing wires from the inside of the furnace out to the handy box. Tighten this up with a flat head and my hybrids get secured in place. Now when it comes to the stranded wire, which most of our hot and neutral wires are going to be stranded coming from the furnace, I'm going to clean these up a little bit. So I'm going to strip off some new insulation, but before pulling the insulation off, of the neutral or hot, I'm just going to use now that cut insulation as a means to get a nice tight twist on the stranded wire, and then that will make the future wiring that much easier. You often see this in light fixtures where the stranded wire is kind of pre-cut, the insulation is pre-cut, and you can just use that to twist the strands together. So then next up, I'll just be installing this pre-made pigtail here on the inside and that will be grounding our equipment. So this will connect up here to the metal. And then because we have that metal nipple coming through, 
I will not actually ground this outside handy box because that will be bonded together through that nipple. Now, if you guys need a reference to that pigtail or even the Knipix hybrid wire strippers, these are super popular with the audience over the years. You can check a link in the description. That will jump you over to the Amazon store where I'm always updating the different list of tools for DIYers. Specifically here on the electrical, you'll see the pigtails, you'll see the hybrid wire stripper, you'll see a ton of the other tools and parts I use. And of course you'll see kits for Wago 221 lever nuts. In my opinion for DIY electrical, Wago lever nuts are gonna give you a more consistent and secure connection compared to fumbling around with the old wire nuts, especially when you're bringing together solid and stranded wire, which can be a little bit more complicated to get a secure hold with a wire nut. So you saw I brought together those neutrals. I'm just passing the neutral from the metal clad coming in to the neutral to the furnace. Now we're bringing together our grounds and that is going to be the ground coming from the metal clad to the ground that is bonded inside the furnace and the pigtail ground here to our light switch. So bringing those together in a three wire Wago lever nut. Then I put a two wire Wago on the inside and passed a solid core pigtail for my hot conductor that would provide the hot to the actual furnace. So this is a simple single pole light switch. So those two gold terminals are just connecting and disconnecting. That is what the light switch is doing. So we'll provide power to the top gold in the clockwise direction, making sure we get a nice, tight, secure hold. And then remember, single pole light switches do have an orientation. So here I need to flip that upside down. So in the up position it's on, down position it is off. Then we'll just tighten everything up here with the Milwaukee ECX screwdriver. So you shouldn't be using like a drywall faceplate. You should be using the appropriate faceplate for your handy box with the more industrial look. And then that will give you kind of that fit and finish look for your disconnect power switch. So if you just needed that power disconnect switch, you're good to go. Now you can easily service your unit, you can flip it off, change out your filter, and you're both now meeting code and it's just a convenience factor. But in the thumbnail of this video and at the start, we talked about this combination of a power disconnect switch and also an additional outlet right here at the handy box. Now that does meet code, even though code says this has to be a dedicated circuit. So that's a little confusing. How could I pull power to another appliance and also provide power to the furnace and that be a dedicated circuit? Well, in this case, this light switch would not only provide an on off power disconnect to your furnace, but it would also turn this outlet on and off as well in the standard configuration, which is what I'm gonna install here. We would then use this most commonly for a condensation pump or an auxiliary piece of equipment that basically goes to the system and that is allowed in code. You might wanna check your local area because an inspector might interpret that code a little bit different. So I'll do the quick swap here and I'll also leave you with how the same component can provide a great emergency backup solution for your furnace, which can really get you out of a tight spot with just a small tweak to the insulation. So the only tweak that I need to my wiring is on the neutral side. Remember, we do have an outlet now, so we need to provide a neutral to that outlet. This is also what makes Wago lever nuts so great. I can reuse that two pin, put it in my box, and then just get a three pin and bring in a pigtail. And because these wires go straight in, they're not damaged, you can reuse those wires. You do not have to restrip them and it's just easy to make any changes or service in the future. And then just use that transparent housing to make sure all your wires are fully seated and you can do your pull test as well. Okay, so now for the wiring, it is a little bit different because we have a few different things going on. So on the same side, we're gonna connect our hot conductor coming from our metal clad. So the hot conductor providing power to the circuit. The neutral is gonna go on your silver screw terminal here. And then on this side, you'd be able to provide 
the switched power. So we'll bring that hot conductor from the furnace here. And because we want the switch to not only power the furnace, we keep this tab in place because we want this outlet to also turn on and off with the switch. So the tab is making connection between these two. You can disconnect that tab and you would need to do that for the emergency power scenario that we'll talk about. But since I want both the top and bottom to act the same, I just tighten in that screw terminal because we will not be using that black screw terminal. And then of course our green ground. Now since the screw terminals here are a little different than like a standard outlet, you have neutral and hot on the same side. So you would want to take your time and not strip extra insulation, having exposed copper with hot and neutral right by each other. So we'll tighten everything up and then set our outlet and switch into the handy box and then using a slightly different faceplate now for like a duplex outlet to finish up our installation. So then we test out our work. I did flip the power back on so my furnace is running. It's in the on position. I want to also use my outlet tester here and confirm I have two amber lights so I do have power at this outlet and then I'm going to turn this off furnace shuts down and I also see that my power is off at this outlet. So everything's wired correctly and ready to go. So since this is a gas furnace, we really only need to get that blower fan and the circuit board itself to power up in a power outage scenario. So there is a case where you can use a simple cord, actually wire that in and bring it out of this handy box. I know that sounds a little bit crazy, this would power your furnace and then you would plug it into this outlet in normal condition and then unplug it and use this cord plugged into something like an EcoFlow Delta portable power station. And this one unit right here can keep your furnace on for eight hours or more to heat up your home and make sure you don't run into any scenarios in the winter time where you're getting freezing pipes or just simply uncomfortable. So if you want to see how to do the small tweaks in the wiring, check out this video right here. And Dave, my buddy from the DIY HVAC guy, will go through the same installation with that small tweak. So you'll be ready to go for any power outages in the future. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.